We'll begin Mass this morning with hymn number 271, 271 from the hymn book. Can I invite you please to stand? very welcome to Mass. I hope you didn't miss your hour too much. I think the sun probably helped. You're very welcome to our celebration of Easter Day. Uh, we celebrated yesterday evening our vigil uh, with great ceremony, great song and great presence and I'm sure we'll do so again this morning. After the Gospel we'll take the opportunity to light our baptismal candle from the Easter candle and together we'll renew our baptismal promises, that by which we came into the family of God. Because St. Paul, you'll recall, says, going into the waters of baptism is like going into the tomb with Christ. So just as he was raised to new life, we too rise from the waters of baptism to live life in a new way and to know the promise of life eternal, the link between baptism and Easter tide. So we'll renew our baptismal promises and I'll sprinkle you with the waters of the flood to remind ourselves that we are Wash clean, worthy, the inheritors of life eternal, the members of the family of God. Together we rejoice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. To, that we might celebrate worthily, instructed by the word of God and nourished by the Eucharist, we pray. And we ask forgiveness for our fears that forgiveness so readily offered by the risen Lord. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. We 
sing together to the glory of God. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Lord Jesus Christ, only be God and Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path of eternity, grant, we pray, that we who celebrate the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought about by your Holy Spirit, rise up in the light of life. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee after John had been preaching baptism. God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. And because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet three days afterwards, God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, not by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead, and he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone, alive or dead. It is to him 
that all the prophets bear this witness, that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his love has no end. Let the family of Israel say, His love has no end. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. The Lord's right hand has triumphed. His right hand raised me up. I shall not die, I shall live. And recount his deeds. The day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord, we rejoice and are glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not in the things that are on the earth. Because you have died, and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Let us celebrate the feast then in the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath day was over, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices with which to go and anoint him. And very early in the morning of the first day of the week, they went to the tomb just as the sun was rising. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But when they looked, they could see that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe seated on the right-hand side, and they were struck with amazement. But he said to them, there is no need for alarm. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See, here is the place where they laid him. But you must go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. It is there you will see him just as he told you. But they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
back in days of old where the writing and pronunciation of English was governed by certain conventions, habits, practices, even rules. Um, we learned how to write and to speak in a variety of ways, how we could do so more elegantly and in a way that made what we had to write or say more intelligible. Um, it's called rhetoric. It's been studied for thousands of years. Um, and my primary school teacher in primary seven, Miss Quinn, a formidable lady, uh, very lovely but nonetheless formidable. Uh, yes, I did get the belt a couple of times. Um, w w was very keen that we learn how to speak English well because she said, even if you, <laughs> I'm going to give the game away here. She said, even if you don't really know what you're talking about, if you do it well, you'll probably get away with it here. The rest is history. So now you've heard to blame. Um, so one of the things she told us, would you believe, in primary seven uh, in, in St John's Port, Glasgow, uh, that it's bad form. It's, it's not very nice English to end a sentence with a preposition. Who knew? And now I, I, I doubtless would have difficulty communicating what a preposition was, but nonetheless, she was the first person ever to quote, and I still remember it, that line from Winston Churchill, this is something up with which I will not put, uh, just so that you could avoid ending his sentence in a preposition. Well, you're going to have to take my word for it, but what is true of rhetoric in English also happens to be true, and there may be a connection between rhetoric in Greek, and what Mark does today, the way the gospel ends, that's, this is chapter 16, verse 8, they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. But he doesn't phrase it eloquently. He doesn't say it in the conventional, nice way. He gets it back to front. I, I, the only English equivalent I've been able to come up with was, they said nothing to anyone they were afraid, but... And that jars, even if we're not bound by rules for our English grammar and rhetoric, there's something not quite right about it. And what is true of that rendition in English is true of what Mark does in Greek. It pulls you up short. So, he spent a lot of time and energy and effort writing 16 chapters of a gospel to communicate to Christians who Jesus was and what he's about. And he leaves you hanging there at the end of the gospel. There's a reason for that. Because if that were true, if they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid, not only is it the way the written gospel ends, it's the way the gospel ends. It's the way the communication of the good news grinds to a halt. Because if they say nothing to anyone, or they were afraid, the gospel ends. It ends with the notion that Jesus died on the cross, and that was the finish of it. But they met someone who said, he is not here, he is risen, he goes before you to Galilee, you will meet him there. And they told their story. They told that to those who needed to go to Galilee, to Peter and to the other disciples. And lo and behold, as you will hear, as we read the Gospels of Eastertide, they went to Galilee and they met the risen Lord Jesus. And others of the disciples in between time met Jesus, the risen Jesus, who spoke to them of what had actually unfolded that Holy Saturday night. But because they told their story, because they overcame their fear, the message of the gospel spread even as far as the northern parts of Europe in which we find ourselves. Think what makes being a witness to what we know and believe. Think what makes it difficult. Why we hesitate. Why we don't say what we know why we hesitate to say something that perhaps we should in certain circumstances and indeed refrain from saying something that perhaps we might in different circumstances. What prevents us? Is it fear? Because if we give in to that fear, soon not only will we not tell the gospel story, but the gospel story will not be told. It will be unacceptable to tell the story as happens with, with, with movement and change in language and sensitivity, things that were just difficult to understand suddenly disappear from the lexicon. They are no longer realities in people's lives. But if we overcome our fear and we speak of what we know and what's been handed on to us and what we hear in the gospel, 
then the gospel does not end, but rather it continues. And we who share our membership of the family of God through baptism, well, that's our call, to share what's been handed on to us and in turn to hand it on. For the courage that the new life of the risen Lord Jesus gives us, that we might embrace it and live it and speak of what we know so that the gospel does not end for each other and for ourselves, we pray today. We'll all light our candles from the Easter candle and then we will renew together our baptismal promises. we've all shared the light around those near to us, can I invite you please to stand. My dear brothers and sisters, let's ask the Lord God to bless this water which he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a reminder of our own baptism. May he graciously renew us that we may remain faithful to the Holy Spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people who celebrate this holy day and for us to recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our salvation, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful, to refresh and cleanse us. You made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. And through water, which Christ made holy by in the Jordan, you have renewed us. Therefore, May this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters baptised this Easter. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. I now invite you to renew your baptismal promises. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk 
with him in the newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let's renew the promises of our own baptism by which we renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. And if you do, the response is that I do. Do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith, it is the faith of the Church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of sin, keep us in his truth and in his grace, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. On the little purple flyer in your hymn book, you'll find the Malik Sprinkling Song, which we'll sing together as I sprinkle you with the waters of baptism. candles, give the wax a moment wax a moment to harden and if we leave them aside, have a seat we'll continue with the preparation of the gifts
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and the good of all this holy church. Rejoicing in Easter gladness, Lord, we offer you the sacrifice by which your whole church is wondrously reborn and nourished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to praise you most gloriously, for Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He is the true Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed death. By rising, he restored our life. Therefore, with Easter joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And the heavenly powers, the angelic host, sing together the hymn of your glory. And together with all the saints, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God Heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, 
welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, our spouse, the Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to life eternal, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. For the coming of God's kingdom, we pray as the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the joyful hope, the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let's stand and pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make you make those you nourish with this Easter sacrament one in mind and in heart. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Can I invite you to make yourself familiar with the latest notices available in all the usual places on Facebook, on our website and in the bulletin. Uh, thank you for being here today in such great number. Uh, it's lovely to see you. We're here every week, so if you're here, that would be great. Uh, if you're not going to be here, then one weekend certainly we won't be here. The parish won't exist anymore. So very much uh, 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 something that we have to decide what we want to do. Uh, and, and, and it's great, great to welcome you, and I hope you have a lovely day uh, and a nice few days, if, particularly if you're on holiday, and that we can enjoy the sunshine. For our younger parishioners, there is an Easter egg hunt now, um, but to prevent an obesity crisis in the local seagull population, there are no eggs out there, but there are little tokens. Uh, so if you go into the garden and look for a token, you can exchange it for an egg. And one token equals one egg. Ten tokens equal one egg. <laughs> Never too young to learn economics. <laughs> so if you find one, great. Please leave the others for others. There may be... One's not quite as able to run as you are. Let them get their chance to. It's, of course, it always intervenes, doesn't it? It's the, also the new financial year. So if you'd like a new set of collection envelopes, uh, they're available in the meeting room. And particularly if you'd like to sign gift aid in, order, in, in support of the parish, it doesn't cost you anything. You get to take some money off the tax man. What's not to like? So... Thank you for your presence. I hope you have a lovely day um, and that you get to spend some time over the next week or so with family and with friends if you're on holiday. We ask God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. Please join me in with number 368, Regina Chaley. Regina Chaley, Regina Chaley, Letare. Alleluia, Alleluia. Hallelujah, hallelujah.